PDP sets for 2023 polls after neck meeting, says former national chairman, while Uche Sekundus uh, says party has approved campaign structure. And insecurity may affect elections outcome in Kaduna, Emo, Katsina and Southern Kaduna, says People's Union. Now this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anacone. The former national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Prince Uche Sekundus, has hailed the party's presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar, and the National Executive Committee of the party for stabilizing the party ready for victory in 2023. Now, Sekundus, in a statement yesterday, said the outcome of the NEC meeting showed the party is set and ready for victory. Meanwhile, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Alhaji Atiku Abubakar, said that the problem bedeviling the party was not fundamental. Uh, he recalled that the governor of River State, Nyesa Mwiki, had faulted the emergence of Atiku as the presidential flag bearer. Yocha Ayu, chairman of the party, and Senator Walid Jibrin, chairman of the board of trustees, all from the northern parts of the country. Now, Wiki accused the party of violating the principles of equity, fairness, and balance, noting that the laws guiding the party has been trampled upon. The People's Democratic Party has approved a unified campaign structure across the country ahead of the 2023 general elections. And joining us to discuss this and more is Frank Shaibu. He is Special Assistant Public Communications to Atiku Abubakar. Glad to have you join us. Yeah, good evening. Glad to be here. Um, <laughs> there's no, without further ado, let's just dive into it. The PDP has been making headlines every single day. And when I say the PDP, I'm talking about Governor Wiki. Um, right from when your presidential candidate picked his running mate, who is the Delta State Governor. Now, it's interesting that it's still an issue as at today. We, we, ho we were hoping that we would hear something from the next meeting uh, that would calm freight nerves, but, the, but Governor Wike is still speaking uh, on the issue. Now, recently, um, uh, Mr. Wahid Jibril left the party. He resigned from the BOT. Uh, but then the response came again from Governor Wike saying that this is uh, mere you know, water on the back of a chicken. Let's start with the Wike um, Atiku situation. What exactly is going on here? Um, well, you have uh, you have uh, you've clearly explained that, and uh, we believe that it's just uh, politics is basically about interest, and uh, you don't expect a bitter heart to be capable of charity. Yeah. What does that mean? Uh, what it means is that he, he contested the, pre the presidential election with Atiku Abubakar, and um, he 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 missed that ticket. And Atiku emerged in a free and fair contest. And if you notice, he never questioned the process that produced Atiku Abubakar in that election. He has not in all the statements he, had, he has made so far in the public domain. No, he has not questioned that. So he, I don't think it's about, I don't feel and I don't think it's about Atiku Abubakar. It's not Atiku that is his problem. He's talking about the party. It's a genuine and legitimate complaint. He has a right to do that. He has a right to, you know, to express his opinion about, about the state of the party, the state of affairs of the party, the structure of the party and all that. But for, you know, but for me, I believe he's a lawyer and he knows very clearly the, the, the constitution of the party and what the, party, the constitution says, particularly in section 45, subsection 2 of the party that clearly states unambiguously that, look, where a, where a national chairman resigns from his position. In, during the pendency of his tenure, are you with me? During the pendency of his tenure, a national vice chairman from the same region, you know, will replace him in acting capacity. That's what our constitution says at, as a party. So it becomes, you know, it becomes difficult to even juxtapose that provision of the constitution of the party. Are you with me? With his demands at the moment, with what I've, I've read in the papers, as demands of His Excellency Governor. Oh, you read in the papers? Yes, I read in the papers. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I have had people who call themselves members of the Southern Caucus mm -hmm. in the People's Democratic Party on this show, mm -hmm. and they would be very quick to say that this is not an Atiku versus Rike problem. It is a Southern Caucus 
in the party asking for fairness. And this is one of the things um, that um, an elder statement within your party, Chief Body Judge, has also voiced, saying there has to be some level of fairness. Uh, but you're telling me that this is what your party constitution says. Does your party constitution also say that most of the people at the helm of affairs need to come from a particular region? No, 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 no. no. We, you see, with profound respect, who are the most, what, is, what do you mean by most of the people? The, the, the person championing the campaign now talking about equity was a part of the process that produced Atiko Bakar as candidate of the, president, of, of the PDP in, this, in the presidential election. Now, if we're talking about equity, before the emergence of Dr. Yocha, you, we had uh, Uche Secondos, who just, you, 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 whom we, we listen to now, you just read a statement from him. You know, he was chairman of the party. He was from the South-South geopolitical zone. He was from the South-South geopolitical zone. But along the line, there were agitations, there were interests, political interests of some persons who were aspiring to contest that election. And they got him out of the way. And with profound respect, somehow, Dr. Yocha, you emerged as, as chairman of the party. Can you, can, I, I want to ask you this simple question. Were there agitations as it is today, before the emergence of Atiku Abakar as candidate of the, of the party, talking about equity and justice in the structure of the party? The answer is no. They were, we were all comfortable with... But, but then, hold on, hold on, hold on. You asked the question. The party at, hold on, at, at some point... Hold you on. asked me a question, so I want to answer you. At some yes. point, they were pushing for a southern candidate. Hence, the likes of Governor Wiki running for that office. So, yes, those agitations were there. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. The party now, at, at that point, proceeded to set up a committee. Because they were talking about, look, we need presidency should be zoned to the south, southern part of Nigeria this because the north has had its fair share. And the answer is no. That is not being fair even to the north. Because as far as PDP is concerned, the last president of, the, of, of Nigeria in the PDP administration came from the south. In the person of Gulag Jonathan. You understand? So that's President Muhammadu Buhari from the north, an APC president represents his party. He is not from the PDP. He so, is not. So, so, but, but is so, the PDP so, an independent so political it, party from Mars not representing the people's no, interest no, no, in Nigeria? No, no, no. no. We because Nigerians, we're talking about, no, because no, President we're, Buhari, yes, might be a product of the APC, oh, but he's a president oh, of Nigeria. Hold on. Is he? Is he, is he I, will, I, I, I want us to see this as a, 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 um, a conversation and not a monologue. So when you ask me questions, I would like to break it down because the team in mass of our people are watching this program. Yeah, it's a very popular program and I'm I'm glad to be on this platform. You see, the basic thing is this. The agitation we're talking about is an agitation by members of my party, not members of the public, mm -hmm. who have the right to vote whom they so desire, based on programs. You see, and we keep telling people, the Nigerian people are aware that hunger and anger is the major determinant of our election in 2023. So, and they're not going to be bothered about geography. The president Nigeria needs at this time is not the president based on geography because a man who is hungry in Calabar is the same as a man who is hungry in Sokoto or in Zamfara. So the issue of geography does not even arise. So this agitation is we, it's an intra-party agitation. And when it came up, based on the, the, the party constituted a committee chaired by one of the allies of Governor Nyesom Wiki, Governor Tom of Benue State. He was the chairman of that committee. To look into look the agitation from the south side. Should the presidential candidate, call, should it be zoned fully to the south-south? And they made it an open-ended contest. And none of the aspirants at that time protested. They all went into the contest. Election was, L -L 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 the, the primary election held. It was won and lost. Then after the victory, after the declaration of Atiku, we now return to say, look, we want to now start an agitation in the middle of the road to say, look, Atiku is presidential candidate is from the north is from northern nigeria it was not by appointment it was by election in a fair context that nobody protested nobody contested nobody 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 even proceeded to court apart from uh, some lazy guys who took the battle to court only recently and claiming that he, he had an interest but that's an issue for another day so the issue now is what is what are we asking for so if the agitation now is about equity if it's if it's about equity 
Equity, a man who is talking, a man who is talking about equity, had the national chairman of the PDP from not just the Sasa, from River State, Nigeria, in the person of Uche Secondos. He was there as chairman of the party. Nobody complained. He was doing fantastically well. He, he you know, he, he organized the party. He went into the last election with Uche Secondos as chairman of the party. This time round, they agitated. Let me tell you something. That's why I started by saying a bitter heart is not capable of charity. I have my interests because I am from the middle belt of Nigeria. If I want to run as president and I have uh, Dr. Yocha Ayu as chairman of the party, what will I do? What will be my first assignment? I want to plot to see that I remove him and bring somebody from a different region as chairman so that nobody would think that there will be no level playing ground. And that was what happened in the, in the case of, uh, of uh, Uche Secondus. He had to leave so, the seat. So it, now we have Dr. Yocha Yu as chairman of the party. Duly elected. We don't have a problem. That's why I said legitimate agitation for change, for equity, for justice. That's not a problem. But the presidential candidate is only a presidential candidate. He is not yet a president. So we are in the middle of a race. It's just like a football match between Chelsea and Arsenal. And while the, the match is going on, you say, oh, because the goalkeeper of Arsenal and the captain of Arsenal are from the same country, we should, we should, we, the, the, the coach should not play them at the same time. When we're in the finals of maybe the UEFA Champions League, it will smack of wretched illiteracy. It will be tendentiously wicked for anybody to contemplate that at that point because we're talking about victory. We're talking of emancipating Nigerians. We're talking of taking Nigerians out of hunger and poverty. We're talking of providing security for the mass of our people. So it should not be about geography at this time. But when we win elections, we're not saying, okay, come on. You have a Tiko Abakar, you are now president of Nigeria. Since you have been elected president, automatically, you, we can't still continue to have the party chairman as chairman of the party because he is from northern Nigeria. These agitations, you see, we have to look at the undercurrents. We have to look at the, 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 the motive. You understand me? That's why I tell people, I say, look, God is a judge of both intentions and actions. What are the intentions? What are the actions? The action is, oh, we're agitating. Legitimate agitation. We don't have a problem with that. Atiku doesn't have a problem. Wherever the chairman comes from, he is comfortable because he's not going to be president of the PDP. He's going to be president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. PDP is a platform, it's a political party and not a pressure group, mind you. So this is the issue. And I, we consider it as something that is amenable and we know that Governor Wiki and his, and his uh, uh, group of friends and co uh, colleagues will see reason and know that, look, their interest, the major interest should be about the people of Nigeria. Okay. And they will see reason and uh, will move forward and will win election in February 2023. I'm curious, what's the relationship between um, Ahaja Tiko Abubakar and Governor Wiki as we speak? And the agitations that you're making reference to that we've been discussing, mm. how does this affect the party going forward? Because, of course, you need to present a united front if you must even convince the voters. When you say relationship, you know they are not. Uh, Atiku is Atiku Abakar is a man, and Wiki is a man. They are not lovers. <laughs> you understand? Me? I don't think I implied that. To okay, you. no. So, but if you are talking of relationship, of course they have a working relationship. I'm not sure you have heard uh, Governor Nelson Wiki cast aspersions on Atiku Abubakar, and I'm not sure you have heard any of us. The personal aides of His Excellency Atiku Abubakar cast aspersions on Governor Nelson Wiki. We have said it times to that number that Wiki, Governor Nelson Wiki of River State is one of our finest. He's our poster boy in terms of projects, in terms of development. You understand? And we cannot denigrate him. We will not denigrate him. It's impossible. You understand? We, he has legitimate claims. But you see, we are, you, we are different. How we ventilate our, our anger and agitations are different. I know I listened to him on the day of the primary election. Before even the election, he came out clearly and said, look, whoever emerges from this process, he's going to support the person. I believe him strongly. He's the man who keeps to his words. He's still going to do that. And I don't have a problem. That's why I said, look, he is making legitimate claims. And we believe that um, at the end of the day, what I will find this level. And there will be a meeting ground. And we will go into this election, not just as a united front, but as a formidable force to displace the do-nothing APC government in Nigeria. Let's move away from the WK drama and talk about your candidate. Um, this is not his first rodeo, neither is it his second, third, or fourth. He's been at it for a long time. Um, many are concerned because 
the government of the day, uh, President Muhammadu Buhari is somebody who tried to be president uh, so many times, and on the fourth uh, try, he f finally became president. But here we are, almost eight years down the line, and many Nigerians are wondering why he wanted to be president so bad, and this is the result that we have. Why should we trust Sanatiku Abubakar to be president for, for a person that seems to be so ambitious um, to want to be president over and over and over again? You see, at this point in our history, Nigerians, what Nigerians need is, uh, is a man who can unify the country. We have never been as divided as we are in this country than we are now. In the first quarter of 2022 alone, we, we, about 1,743 persons were either killed or kidnapped in this country. With profound respect to you. So, on daily basis, the only testimonial of this government in several years has been that of tears, that of death, senseless massacre, we have over 18 million out-of-school children in Nigeria today. Over 18 million out-of-school children. Our universities have been shut for over six months. I heard a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria said the other day that parents should go and, you know, and, and, and prostrate to ASU so that they can come back to school and all that. It's marks of wretched illiteracy. So we need someone who can unite us, who can use our dynamic diversity as a unifying factor. Nigeria is one of the most heterogeneous societies in the world. One of the most heterogeneous societies in the world. We have multiple ethnic groups. And, but this government has divided us along religious lines, tribal lines, political lines, sectional lines, then insecurity. Insecurity, in fact, is the mother of all. Because without security, nothing can happen. Without security, we have so many children. I'll give you a, let me give you a classical example. In 2011, in 2011, the current running mate of uh, the APC presidential candidate was governor. I remember that barely a few months after he came into office, he relocated to Abuja. He operated from Abuja. Moved his two daughters and one son to a school in Abuja. One, one the term in Turkish school and one other British school like that. They were less than about 10 years old about, at that time. And he operated from Abuja, the federal capital territory, abandoning governance in the state. So if a sitting governor had all the paraphernalia of security, security aides would abandon governance at that point. Today, nothing is further from that. It's the same thing. We remember when they came in 2015, they told us, oh... We are going to do this. We are going to do that. Security. We are, we are coming with a retired general, a war, a war veteran. We are going to do it. No, all those things, nothing has happened. So now we need someone with a technical know-how. We need someone who is going to deal with our, the issue of education. We need someone who is going to look at, create a program of schools to job pathway, a school to job pathway, concentrating on our vocational schools and technical colleges. Let me tell you something. In our country today, in Nigeria today, and even world over, there's a curious coinage while listening to His Excellency a few days ago. He said, look, certificates no longer even move, move anyone anywhere. What we need now is called certificates. And I said, Your Excellency, what do you mean by certificate? He said, certificate is a curious coinage. Where he is he's targeting a situation where he wants to drive our educational system to a point where children should be equipped with entrepreneurial skills. Re resuscitate our vocational and technical colleges where it, every child who passes through the functional secondary education should learn a skill in addition to his academic knowledge of the basic, uh, of the, of basic education. And I tell you, my dear sister, if you go further, you will discover that it is impossible, practically impossible, to deal with the issue of insecurity without education. Do you know that in the last six months that Nigerian, that Nigerian students have been at home, with profound respect to you, they have become more vulnerable to these insurgents, to rapists, to kidnappers, of course, because they want to keep luring them into different crimes. 
Okay. Including but not even limited to drugs. I'm sorry, I want to bring you back to my question. Go ahead. Why should Nigerians trust your candidate to be a different president or a good president? You're telling us about our problems. They are problems. We know these yes, problems yes, already. Yes. What solutions do you have for us? We have multiple. I just, I just gave you one concerning the schools to, 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 uh, uh, schools to job do pathway. That, do you think that that's the most important thing that for is, Nigerians right now? Course, Education the, is important. The most important Education thing is important, to us but now is unification. Will that make a person vote for him? Of course. The, the, fact, the most important thing as we speak now is unification. We need unity. Okay. Atiku Obaka believes clearly that we have been so divided. He believes too that look, the agitation, for instance, you see in the Southeast, and in insurrection you see in the, in the Southeast, for instance, is as a result of the fact that power has been absent from that region for a long time. Do you understand me? Now, he believes this is a man who all his lifetime is associated with different persons from different geopolitical zones. I read in one of the papers recently where, where one, of the uh, one of the candidates for this election said, oh, who did Atiku make in Sokoto? Who did he make in the Northeast? Who did he make in... No. We're talking of a Nigerian. He is a pan-Nigerian candidate who has his tentacles all over Nigeria. He is not a tribal jingoist. So we can't look for an Atiku. We're not looking for somebody who runs a, an enclave in one, in one state, dominates there, he wants to be the bride at every wedding and be the corpse at every funeral. No, that's not the kind of leadership we're talking about. We're talking of someone who if he steps into the north, he's celebrated. He goes to the southeast, he's celebrated. Let me tell you, the chairman of the governing council of Atiku Abakas University is an Igbo man. The American University of Nigeria is an Igbo man. So his businesses, his chains of businesses, that's how you see different persons from different geopolitical zones who are there managing those businesses effectively. He prays like every Christian, he fasts like every Muslim. Be a wonderful Muslim. He allows you the space to do your job. There was a day, look, it was time for Angelus. I'm Catholic and I said, Your Excellency, it's five minutes to my prayer time. I need to leave so that I can go for my... I said, please, we suspend this meeting for you to go and finish and come back. That is the kind of person we're talking about. Who is tolerant about, about religion? Who will not take advantage of our religious, our religious diversity to say, oh, oh, they're not. Let me target them. The only way I can get them is to say, look, let me pick a vice presidential candidate who is a Muslim from there, take him from there so I can use religion to target them. No, they are wiser. The people are smarter because they are hungry and they are angry. So those kind of shenanigans can't work anymore. Those kind of outdated tactics cannot work anymore. They are looking for someone who will unite us as a country. Atiku is that candidate. He represents that force. He is the face of unification. He's good. He's equipped with the, with the requisite skills to do that. And that's why you see some of us around him. I'm a blue-blooded Catholic. I'm a Christian. I love God. But I love every Muslim around me as well because he has taught me to do that. He has shown me love. Okay. Let's talk about... Um you just said something funny that you love God. We all love God, don't we? No, what, some persons whatever don't God do. that we serve. Some persons don't do. Some we worship Igbe. Let's talk about that. the campaign strategy. Now, you've told me some things. Hopefully, uh, when the blueprint is out tomorrow, he is going to be a, a presenting it somewhere to, I think, the Guild of Editors. We have something. multiple. We, we, have, we have been interfacing with multiple. Um, um, what is your campaign strategy? Oh, I think some, you see, sometimes I think it would be wrong for me at this point to tell you our campaign strategy. Our winning strategy should be kept to our chest. <laughs> the only one we don't keep away from the people is our policy document. From day one, we remain the, he remains the only candidate who has a laid down policy document. This is going to be, whether we like it or not, a, a three horse race as we have seen it. Hmm. Many would, maybe many would want to differ, but then um, you've Between seen, who and who? we've seen the Labour Party. Um, the PDP and the APC. Let's talk about the power of the incumbents. Um, we've, we've seen your candidate try, try and try several times, mm. um, even against President Buhari, and mm. still didn't win. Mm. What's the certainty that comes? Because I always say that Nigeria is a very, very diverse country, and our pro so are our problems. Mm. Why would anybody want to be president of this country? But then, since he's interested, um, <laughs> so that, that's my question. I'm wondering, um, 
What makes him so certain that he can win this time around? Not he can win, he will win this time well, around. Well, Nigerians have to decide that. Nigerians will decide that. Nigerians, the Nigerians will separate the, the wheat from the chaff. Well, this you time also round. can't call the race why. right now because he hasn't even started. I will, I will tell you why. Campaigns have not started, but I will tell you why Nigerians will choose an article over and over again. I'd like to hear it. Yes, because first off, I'll tell you something. When in 2015, President Muhammad Buhari emerged president of Nigeria, of course, Nigerians felt they voted for him. But somehow, they got to find out only a few weeks, few, few months ago, that one man, single, you know, and made him president single-handed. During his outburst in somewhere in Abeokuta in Ogun State, when he said, he, oh, the president cried even on national television after failing three times, and he promised him and made him president. Now, when a man appropriates and arrogates the power of giving power. The, listen to this, this analogy carefully. When a man appropriates the power of giving power to man, to himself, it means that it is the height of heresy. Power belongs to the Almighty. Only God gives it to whom he desires. And he uses the people to do that. But when you begin to feel that it is about you. That's why I, I said earlier that, look, Atiku is different because the other candidates, that's why you say it's a three-horse race. No, I said, no, no, for me, I disagree very clearly because so, it's going so to be a two-horse race. You don't think anything... It's going to be between so, Atiku so you're and, me that you and think, the Labour Party's candidate. No, 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 so, so you, yes. you're telling me that you, you see nothing or you're not worried about the... Uh, OB phenomenon and the, the I, said, I said, did you listen to me? I, I said, did. The, the, the election is going to be between President, uh, um, His Excellency Vice President Atiku Abubakar and may, possibly maybe a P2B of the Labour Party. But certainly not the, do, so not, the, you, not the candidate of the do not in APC government. Why do you think so? Why, I think so because Nigerians know better. Nigerians are hungry. Nigerians are angry. Nigerians are insecure. But, if the, you open but, the, your but then the PDP has been in power for so long. And, and, and then we build, no, and then no we, here we are in 2022. Maybe Nigerians, maybe uh, Nigerians wanted, or maybe Atiku thought that he would be able to give us a new Nigeria in 2015 or in 2019. But this is 2022. Our problems are totally different from the problems that we had. That is why I said this. Year. See, the, 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 the scenario today, the indices today, presents Atiku as, as, as just the right choice for the people. Really? Yes. The indices today clearly situates him. Okay. Situates him properly to win this election. I'd just, like just like to quickly push this in because we're running out of time. Oh, my goodness. Now, um, Shatima, the running mate of uh, the APC presidential candidate, Bola Tinubu, uh, has said, and I'd like to quote him, we'll retire the political tourist, Atiku, back to Dubai. <laughs> would you like to respond? I will respond to that. Ordinarily, I would not have even um, elevated him by responding to that. But here is a man, I asked him a question. I would ask him a question on national TV today. I remember, if you remember the Christmas bombing in, in Madala in 2011, in 20, uh, December 2011, on the eve of Christmas, where over 37 persons, worshippers, were killed and over 58 persons were injured in that massacre. The mastermind of that bombing, Kabiru Sokoto, was traced to the governor's lodge where his Excellency, Mr. Shetima, was staying. Whenever he answers that question, I think I can, have, I, can now, I can now decide to respond to him. But as far as I'm concerned, there's complicity. He should explain to Nigerians what happened in, uh, during that time. Why would Kabiru Sokoto, the mastermind of a, of, of, uh, of a bombing incident, that claimed the lives of, of defenseless Nigerians be found in the residence of a sitting governor. And he was arrested there before he now escaped again. Okay. Only God will help us. Well, Frank Shaibu is a special <laughs> assistant public communication to uh, Atiku Abubakar, who is the presidential candidate for the PDP. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Thank you, and I look forward to speaking with you again, possibly after we are, you know, or before our inauguration in May 2023. <laughs> okay. Well, that's uh, it on this segment. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be talking about insecurity and how it might affect the 2023 election. Stay with us.